Morning. Thank you for joining us um, for our fourth session of the Well Prepared Program. Um, this is a, a, an initiative um, by the Ada Pi chapter of American South Farm Fraternity in collaboration with the Chi Ada Pi, Sorority Tau Chi chapter, East Orange Family Success Center, and the Integrated Black Nurses Association, New Jersey chapter. Um, the program is community oriented and it targets families with um, children in grades um, three to six. And um, we really want to focus on healthy eating habits and um, encouraging a healthy lifestyle. Um, next session, we're looking forward to introduce um, an exercise portion um, to, these, um, to, the, to, the, to the program for the day. So we want to get up and move a little bit, all right? So um, the program starts at 10 o'clock in the morning, so you should be nice and awake by the time we go. So next time, be ready to go, all right? All of the training sessions are led by um, seasoned and um, health care professionals with a deep understanding of why it's important for families to live a healthy um, lifestyle and to eat well. Um, we look forward to all of the sessions being interactive, so please feel free to answer questions. Um, you can use the reactions um, button on your screens to raise your hand or simply raise your hand and you'll be recognized by the presenter or um, someone who's um, watching, facilitating the, watching the, uh, the chat. So once again, we appreciate you. We encourage you to tell a friend to come join us and more information will be provided at the end of the program about uh, upcoming programs. All right. So without any further ado, I'm going to turn it over to um, um, Nurse Yolanda Jackson, who will be um, facilitating the program uh, from here. Good morning, everyone. As usual, welcome back to our fourth session out of six. Um, I hope that everyone is um, taking in all of these nuggets and making some lifestyle changes. Um, as I always say, I like to stick with our time. We have an excellent, excellent presenter today. She's a registered dietitian by the name of Denise Busby. I've been knowing her for many years. We have done multiple programs together in the depth of her knowledge when it comes to nutrition and just um, areas focusing on our health more than just eating more than just um, presenting a calorie for you. She, she really breaks things down. Um, I know we have to stick to the script to a sense, but um, to reach out to Denise on the outside, you will have a depth of knowledge, especially as it um, pertains to us as black and brown people. And I'm here to let Denise share a little bit more of her background as she comes to present to you when in this hour. Denise. Good morning again. And, and thank you so much, Lisa, for the uh, introduction. And I'm going to um, say that it is a blessing not only to have a fellow um, healthcare professional coworker, but a sister friend. So it always goes beyond that. And yes, we have known each other uh, for years. And that's why I affectionately uh, call her Lisa. And people are like, who's Lisa? Yolanda? Oh yeah. <laughs> so that helps. A little bit about my background. Well, I wasn't uh, expecting that, but just to give you a brief um, uh, a scenario of my career, if you will, my career track, um, it is only when I graduated from Douglas College, which was then the Women's Division of Rutgers University, and I completed my four years. My first job was as a dietetic technician at Orange Memorial Hospital, which is since closed. And I was working um, under the tutelage, if you will, for about three years under my mentor at the time, Mrs. Gladiolus Givens. And at the conclusion of three years, she said to me, it's time for you to leave. I was very insulted. I said, I'm working hard. I and another a dietetic another African-American uh, technician graduating from Hunter College. And Gladys said to me, it's time for you to leave. And had she not said that, I would not have the um, incentive to become, um, go and apply for an internship um, at Mountainside Hospital in Montclair, New Jersey. I completed that within a year's time. And back in the day when I was going through an internship, um, there were no stipends. So it was one year without a salary 
but free food and parking. And um, if it were not for Gladiolus Givens, I would not be the, the person that I am today and have accomplished everything because of Gladys Givens. And so then I will always call and say her name. Um, so thank you, Lisa, for that. So I, I welcome um, parents to module four in which uh, we will learn about meal planning and shopping healthier on a budget. So this module will help you apply all that you have learned in modules one to three about childhood obesity, about uh, the importance of the five recommended uh, servings of fruits and vegetables, and how to keep a, an eye on those sugar-laden uh, sweetened beverages. So we put all, everything together, if you will, to learn how to plan meals for um, ourselves as uh, adults, as, as parents, and for the children, and to learn how to shop for healthy choices, even if you are on a budget. So meals are still a family affair and eating meals as a family whenever possible is very important. And it's important to maintaining a healthy eating behavior for the family. So I have a question for you, I have a question. What are some reasons, and you can check the answer and we'll share your response. What are some reasons that you think eating as a family is important? So I'll give you a few minutes to think about that or to check the answer. So what do you think about eating as a family? Why is that important? Okay. Are there any responses? Communication, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Johnson, absolutely. We've got to find out what's going on during the course of the day. A recap of the day, thank you so much. Quality time, yes. A, a time to sit back and exhale, absolutely. Thank you, thank you for responding. So experts have found that children who eat regularly with their families are more likely to eat, believe it or not, fruits and vegetables. And does that surprise you? Does that surprise you? So even though uh, our schedules can be very hectic and busy these days, consider making family meals a priority. It, it's back in the day and we all remember where we had to come and shove, you had to sit down at the table and have a meal with your family. Talk about what we're eating. Oh my goodness, thank you, Ms. Johnson. Absolutely, and the importance of that. So I want you to take a few seconds just to listen to uh, some steps that you can take um, towards making family meals a family affair. So think about choosing a time when you can eat at least one meal a day as a family. And you can decide whether that's going to be breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And parents should decide when and where meals are served and what is offered. And I like what Ms. Johnson, I believe, mentioned um, that it's a time to talk about including. Children can decide what foods they will eat and how much to eat within reason. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, try to include your children in preparing meals. This is most important. Get them uh, involved in this whole activity. Limit eating and drinking of unhealthy snacks between meals. So can you imagine you're planning a, a well-balanced, healthy, wholesome meal, and then you see your child snacking on something. What are you eating? Oh, just a candy to, to fill me up before I eat. That's a problem. Gather around the table for meals. Help children to learn um, good manners at, and mealtime behaviors, mealtime behaviors. I remember uh, years ago when we were able to go to camp, and I'm talking years ago, my sister and I used to go to way to camp. And every now and then, um, it was a Girl Scout camp. And we were lucky to go every year because they gave scholarships out to all the Girl Scouts. And there were only seven in the troop, so we all got scholarships. And at the camp, we used to have um, what they call um, uh, white glove night or uh, China service. And um, you'd have to learn how to eat in terms of um, behavioral 
um, dining, fine dining. That's the word I'm looking for. Fine dining habits. I remember that still to this day. Um, be a role model. That's the most important. And these habits that you want your children to develop as they grow older. So even if you don't have a lot of time, you can still plan healthy meals for the family. Another question. What are some things that you think could help you save time and still make healthy choices? So think about that for a second and you can chat the answer. What are some things that you think you could help save that would help save time and then still make healthy choices? That's a, you can check the answer. Prepare meals that last for a few days. Meal prep, most important. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Davis. Meal prep, head of time. Yes, yeah, so, Mr. Okay, I will. Thank you, Mike, I'll do that. Buy fruits. Thank you, Ms. Johnson, buy fruits, absolutely. So let me share a few um, tips with you. Next one. Okay, all right, not, okay. So let me share a few tips with you. Not one, plan ahead for the week's meals. So I want to share some com uh, a comment that I um, picked up from my sister who is also a registered nurse and retired military. And I like this and I retain it in my thoughts and it's called the words that she used or her phrasing is Shop your house first. Mike, you can go back one more slide. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Shop your house first. Shop your house first. So plan ahead um, for the week's meals. Buy and prepare meals one week on your least busy day. So this will allow um, for you to portion your foods and save money just by buying in bulk. Make a shopping list, shop your house first. So it's important, this could be a really good activity for everyone in the house. So then um, parents and children can take a list and look and see what's in the pantry. And if you don't have a pantry, what's available. Um, cabinets, what's in the refrigerator, what's in the freezer. Everyone has an assignment to shop the house first. Have you ever done this, gone to ShopRite for the can-can sale? And you may have picked up several cans of a no salt added um, green beans. And the next thing you know, when you look again, you've got like five cans of it. Well, you forgot to shop the house first. And so that was a purchase that you did need to make. Shop the house first. Make a shopping list that includes everything you, need, you will need for the upcoming week. And this will ensure you have everything on hand when it comes time to preparing a meal and will eliminate different back and forth trips to the grocery store. So keep healthy choices on hand for the week. Add uh, chopped fruits and vegetables ahead of time. I think someone mentioned fruits, which is great. And keep those uh, ahead of time just to serve with low fat dressings and dips. Before Mike advances, I'd like to share some additional information with you. And that per, uh, pertains to food waste in the United States. I just wanna share a few stats with you pertaining to food waste in the United States. The reason for food waste, what's being wasted and the reason, and finally, food waste prevention. So this is just a little extra tidbit, if you will. Food waste in the US. Americans waste 150,000 tons of food each day. And that equals to a pound per person. Americans throw away approximately $165 billion worth of food each year. And for the average American family, that can add up to about 200, uh, 2,200, um, 2,000, I apologize, $2,200 per household. Reasons for food waste. When grocery shopping, people may want to look for that perfect red 
apple without flaws, the bananas without flaws, peppers, no dents without flaws. Okay, that that uh, and, and and those things. Um, no one wants the bad or ugly fruits. Many people buy more food than they actually need, causing the food spoilage and eventually food waste. So what's being wasted? Um, food items like dairy, fruits, vegetables, sometimes beans, cereal, fish, meat. That's what's being wasted. We waste a lot. And the reason for food waste again um, is the food waste at the consumer end has the greatest economic, social, and environmental impacts because of its value added lost. So there's that lack of knowledge. Our eyes are bigger than our stomach for preparation. Food is not used in a timely manner. Convenience and taste, it just doesn't taste right. Food prevention tips, just a few more things to share with you. Food prevention tips. Keep an organized refrigerator. Keep, um, love your leftovers. I don't know about you, um, but when we were growing up, we you know, enjoyed our leftovers, okay? Uh, don't be picky or a perfectionist when it comes to food. Certainly you want to inspect it. I don't want to overshadow, overlook that. Certainly if you um, observe spoilage, you don't want certainly not to pick that up. But don't be picky or be a perfectionist and store food properly pre to preserve the freshness and keep track of the food that you purchase. So I wanna share one other thing with you. It's the concept of ethylene. So wait a minute, I just talk about ethylene and that sounds like some sort of gas. But ethylene is an odorless, colorless gas and it's naturally produced and released by most fruits and vegetables as a ripening agent. So it happens naturally. So I'm gonna share two categories with you and then we'll move on because I want you to separate these two. The two categories are ethylene producing fruits and vegetables. And you can check, um, write these down real quickly if you want. The ethylene producing um, fruits and vegetables are things like apples, apricots, avocados, ripened bananas, can open figs, and some ethylene sensitive fruits and vegetables are unripened bananas, green beans, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, carrots, cucumbers. So what's happening when you store ethylene producing items, it has to be stored separately from ethylene sensitive food items. What does that all mean? So if you want to ripen a banana quickly, um, put an avocado and a banana in a brown bag. The ethylene gas cre is created in the brown bag, um, stimulating the production of ethylene and ripening. So the case in the ripening and aging and unfortunately spoilage of produce. Refrigeration enables the increased concentration of this buildup of ethylene gas. So basically bottom line takeaway message, Keep your fruits and vegetables separate. Green peppers in one part or storage container of the refrigerator and keep them separate and apart from your fruits. That's it for, that's a good takeaway. Okay, thank you, Mike. Mills in a hurry. So let's say if you have a slow cooker, that's a really good idea don't have one, you may want to consider, if budget will allow, purchasing one. And with the slow cooker, it only takes a few minutes to assemble most slow cooker recipes. And if you go online, they have some really pretty decent, healthy slow cooker recipes you can pick and choose from. And this works well if you are home during the day or on weekends, and it will expedite time. The, the meal uh, will cook during the day and ready to go and ready to be consumed by dinner time. So 
So if you cook in large batches and freeze, it works for you. Cook more than needed for one meal and freeze the leftovers in single serving containers. When time is, is tight and, and you're, you're, you're a little bit constrained in terms of time, consider pre-cooked um, protein options like a rotisserie chicken, canned tuna fish or chicken, and pre-cooked shrimp if there's no allergy. Even, so for quicker cooking options, you can purchase fresh um, fish fillets on the thinner side or vegetarian protein food items um, like tofu and canned beans. Tofu is a whole nother conversation and a whole nother opportunity for us to talk about um, um, meat alternatives. Um, I've tried it a couple of times myself and I have food wasted tofu a couple of times myself. I finally figured it out and it's not bad. It does taste like chicken, depending on what you, <laughs> how you prepare it. Now, if Mike will share a safe food storage slide with you, I just want to bring up the fact, well, it's important to food and store it, but I wanna share with you some information about safe food storage. So while Mike is bringing that up, does anyone know how long you should keep um, cheese in the refrigerator? or how long you should freeze or how long chicken should remain frozen. Okay, so I'm sharing some safe food storage tips with you. We're ready to go to the next slide. Thank you, Mike. Take a look at what you see in front of you and tell me, does this surprise you? So we talk about cooking batches and freezing. We talk about how to um, be time con conscious, but this is what is most important. Look at how long you should keep an open package of hot dogs, get lunch and meat, how long it should remain in the refrigerator and the freezing time. Look at bacon, look at sausages. On the reverse side, sorry, it's a little bit off, but that's just how I sent it to Mike. How long you to keep things in the refrigerator and then freezer. It's forever. Next um, PowerPoint slide if you have it, Mike. Okay, this is another good one. Look at the hard cooked eggs. One week. Look at um, steaks way on the bottom or a roast. Three to five days in the refrigerator. Refrigerator temperature is most important, but look at the freezing time in terms of months. Look at chicken, look at a whole chicken, one to two days in the refrigerator and one year in the freezer. Just something to think about, um, seafood. Chopped meat or poultry three to four days, ready to cook, prepared, right? Ready to go into a salad? Well, on the fifth day, it becomes an issue. Three to four days in the refrigerator and look at the freezing time, six, two to six months. Anything else, Mike, on that PowerPoint slide? Uh, there's um, leftovers. Yes. Okay. It, it, okay, I'm ready to go to the next one. Okay. Thank you. I don't know why that's me. Okay. And so more, and, and so is this available for um, our parents to have? I think this is most important. I, I think they have. Yeah, I'll, anything you want me to send out, I'll send out. Um, yeah, that's perfect. And I think this is um, important. Um, this leads us to a whole nother issue, not only on safe food storage, but uh, food safety because of another issue. So I don't want to belabor this point. And Mike, I think I have one more slide in this whole um, production. Oh, that was it. Oh, okay, that's it. Okay, yeah. great. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And we will be sharing that with you. That is important. So healthy shopping on a budget, back to that. Next slide, slide four. 
Just give me one moment to switch. Thank you, I sir. I appreciate that. And so while Mike is, is toggling back to that, it, it's important. These are things we, we about, especially during the pandemic. Pandemic. Yes, yeah, someone had a question? Okay, so healthy um, shopping on a budget. Now that we have uh, some time on, we spent some time on meal planning, let's find out how to shop healthy at the grocery store, even on a budget. Another question for you. What do you think are some challenges to buying healthy food choices? What are some challenges to buying healthy food choices? I'll give you a few seconds to check your answer. Money, absolutely. Most important. Money is most important. Thank you, Ms. Davis. So let's, uh, items not available in the store. Thank you. Thank you. Food debits. It's an issue. Thank you. So let's take a look at some tips that can help um, help you. So is there an, any issue with buying a store brand? Absolutely not. You'll get the same or similar product for a less expensive price. So if your grocery store, and we know where we shop, um, some of the major grocery stores, if they have a membership card, sign up for it to save, make, uh, save some money on a purchase. And making a shopping list and sticking to it the my plate guide when you're developing your, your shopping list will help. And remember what my sister has mentioned, shop your house first. Don't waste money if you can't, if you don't have to do that. Don't shop when you are hungry. You will be tempted to buy more food. Don't shop when you are hungry. Do you agree? You will be tempted to buy more food. Let me share another perspective with you about that. And in doing some research for um, the project, I said, um, this is what I thought was interesting. So Dr. Norbert Schwartz, he's a provost, provost professor of psychology and marketing. This is his spin on shopping when hungry. He says, and I quote, hungry shoppers purchased 60% more and purchased more non-food items than less hungry shoppers in his research. And this desire to eat, it's the idea of getting more stuff, it stimulates unrelated behaviors. So what does that have to do with the topic? Well, you're hungry, yeah, you're gonna buy more food, but then there were some binder clips that you've been looking for, and there they are. There are the pens. There are the pads. 60% more things, and you got to get that comic book for the child. Some things you wanted to buy that you weren't planning, we, we tend to buy, according to this study, 60% 60 more of non-food items. That was interesting, I thought, and I'm sharing it with you. Um, more on shopping healthy on a budget. So prepare meals yourself rather than buy ready to eat meals. These ready to eat meals and processed foods are convenient, but often cost more. And someone is sharing, I try my best not to take my children when I go shopping to purchase food. Yes, that's what Dr. Schwartz said. They're gonna buy, help you buy stuff you don't need that's not food related. Yes. Um, so these ready to eat and processed foods are convenient, but often cost much more than when purchased in the basic form. So buy in bulk. So it's almost always less expensive to buy foods in bulk. Smarter choices are family packed um, chicken, steaks, fish, larger bags of frozen vegetables, but before you do it, shop your house first. And before you shop, remember to check if you have enough freezer space. Um, buy canned or frozen um, fruits or vegetables with the canned items, especially with the fruits. Um, it's important to remember to pay 
just 100% um, fruit juices and vegetables. Hopefully you're prepared, you know, purchasing them canned, no salt added or low sodium. You can always spice them up with herbs and spices that don't contain, um, thank you, don't contain um, salt. People are sharing. I saw the word coupon and yes, Miss Dunnell, they throw stuff in the cart. So we are confirming what Dr. Schwartz said. There's 60% more non-food items that being are, uh, are being purchased. Uh, when time is tight, consider making large batches of your favorite recipes, even doubling or tripling the recipe. Freeze um, in individual containers. I'll digress a little bit by saying you're freezing and you're spicing up a food item and if you over spice, freezing intensifies the spice so that when it's reheated again, you just want to be cognizant and aware of that. Use them throughout the week if you're freezing the food items in individual portions. And um, I just want to say again, and you'll have the chart on the freezer time, refrigerator time. Remember whatever you do to freeze, date, label, and your time frame. That's going to be important. So remember that safe food storage guide that we will be sending out to you. So Mike, the next slide on food labels. So this is where the rubber hits the road right here. And it's with the new food label. So another skill that you can learn that will help you make healthy food choices while shopping is learning how to read and understand the nutrition label. So the nutrition facts panel on the food packages are most important. These labels sometimes can be a bit confusing. At least they were a couple of years ago, but now it's a bit more um, intuitive. So you get to see exactly what we are, are consuming. Um, and so another question for you before we delve a little bit deeper into the nutrition label. Another question for you, and here it is. Why is the printed information on the nutrition label important? So why is the printed information on the nutrition label important? Why is it important? And why do people take time to, to look? I, I see people in the supermarket inspecting it as if they were FDA and USDA inspectors. What are they looking for? Why is it important? And you can chat your answer real quick. So just to share, okay, to what's in it. Absolutely correct. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. It's important to know what's in it. Um, to detect the salt content. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's most important. Okay, so thank you for sharing that. So you can get a general idea exactly. Um, Mr. Wilson is saying there's a lot of things on the label that um, healthy and the label shows otherwise. Um, allergens, food allergies, absolutely. The sodium content keeps coming up, absolutely. So you can get general idea about what's in a food and its nutrition. And this uh, label will help you just figure out what a serving is and you see what's actually in front of you. So let's take a little bit of time just to look at the food label format. I will tell you that the final version of this nutrition fact label um, appeared or the final version appeared was manufactured or released to the public in 2016. And it was reformatted just to give us a general idea in terms of what's what and, and the portions that are available. If you look at the label that's in front of you now, I'll just go through a, a few highlights. If you look at the serving area, we used to sort of figure out, well, how many you know servings? Well, it tells you. In this particular product, there are two servings in this container, but it tells you in one serving of the product, the right side, it will 
contain 250 calories. And then you see the subcategories, the percentage of daily value. And you see the saturate, the total fat, the saturated fat, trans fat, cholesterol. Everything is there for you in that particular food item. So remember, it was reformatted and put on the market. And if I am a billion dollar company, I am going to stop the presses. And I actually worked for Nabisco back in the day before they were bought out by another company. And actually when I was there, they stopped the press on any product that was being available, made available to the public until the label was correct back then. So if I'm a billion dollar company, I'm not gonna make a mistake. I'm gonna take my time and actually go through and present the label with the correct information for you. I'm going to stop by mentioning one thing, which I think is most important in understanding this whole nutrition labeling um, segment here. Anything listed on a nutrition facts panel label within the first five ingredients will be predominant. Anything listed on a nutrition label within the first five ingredients will be predominant. So if your interest is to watch your, your total fat intake, your sodium, then if something, okay, thank you for sharing. And then, um, so if something were to contain um, whole wheat, um, sugar, butter, salt. So that's something it didn't say, lot to us, but it did say in the second ingredient is some saturated fats and sugars that are, are appearing. So the butter, the sugar, and the salt. So anything listed, so that's a quick way of getting through the supermarket. So anything listed within the first five ingredients are predominant. So this particular product, you see what's there. And when they reformatted the label, you see the font is a little bit larger because they did that on purpose so that we'd be able to research and get the information that we actually need. Um, and the leader nutrients that they're focusing in on now versus the old label are vitamin D, calcium, iron, and potassium. Now, based on the just additional information real quick, and I'll move on, based on a research from the Institute of Medicine, the new label will include information to increase the visibility of vitamin D in a product. Potassium, calcium, and iron. And the percentage of daily, daily value, what does that mean? That's that new language or not so new, but maybe clarify just a little bit more for us to understand. So that percentage of daily value tells you how much a nutrient is in a serving of food that contributes to the daily eating pattern or daily diet of 2000 calories a day. And that's just general advice. That may not be what you need, but that's what the advice is based on 2,000 calories per day. So what is important? What's the takeaway here? And it's on the bottom of your um, information on the PowerPoint slide. So if a nutrient is 5% or less, it's low in a nutrient. And I would interject and say if it's 18 to 20% or higher, it's high in a nutrient. So just looking at this label real quick, if you look at the sodium, which a lot of you brought up sodium, right? It says in one cup of this product, there is in fact 20% sodium in a cup of this product. But if you were to heat and consume the entire product, look at the sodium, it doubles to 40%, which means this product has what, almost 900, that 470 times two milligrams of sodium, or at least 40% sodium. So this product is very high in sodium, and it seems to be higher in total fat. Something to take into consideration. And it doesn't have a lot of fiber and sugar. So nutrition fact label. So look at these areas. You're going to look at the serving area, check out the calories per serving, and the nutrients listed, and you all mentioned sodium. I just want to share one bit of information to you about sodium. So a lot of you brought that up. And this is what I'll share with you. Before you move on, Mike, let me just share a few um, comments. 
So December 2020, the dietary guidelines for Americans were released. And they were the 2020-2025 dietary guidelines for Americans. And this is what it said really quickly about added sugar. The limit is 10% or less of total calories starting at the age of two. So for context, drinking even a 20 ounce bottle of soda would exceed this recommended 10% limit. Sodium, this is what's interesting. The limit is 2,300 milligrams of sodium daily. We've heard that number, but here's what's interesting. For older teenagers and adults, and less for children younger than the age of 14, their projection is 1,200 milligrams of sodium per day, for ages one to three, 1,500 milligrams of sodium per day for ages four to eight, and 1,800 milligrams of sodium per day for children nine to 13 years of age. More definitive focus on sodium for the lifestyle, for the family. So this is new for us. They're taking into consideration we were talking about adults and we were talking about individuals with hypertension, diabetes, what about the children? What about the children? So I share that with you. Thank you, Mike. Um, okay, so Mike, before you move on, just a, a couple of, um, of walk away or takeaway points. So watch for these words on the label. And I believe one of the uh, Q brothers brought that up. So don't assume that because it says sugar-free or fat-free, that means it's calorie-free as well. Read the label. Anything listed within the first five ingredients will be predominant. And these statements do not automatically mean a product is good for you. Check out the nutrition facts label to make sure. Don't assume that because the package looks like it should be one serving, it actually isn't. And many beverages and bottles and packages of chips, cookies, candies will contain at least two to three per serving. Thank you, Mike. Next slide. So this is a very interesting concept. Very interesting concept. So it's another tool and it can be used when shopping. And this chart will help you make smart food choices at the grocery store. And so the categories that they're presenting to you are slow, or go rather, slow and low. And there's, you will receive this PowerPoint lecture with a citation. So go, go for foods um, that will be important for our body and provide it with important nutrients. Lowest in certainly sodium from what I shared with you in terms of the dietary guidelines for Americans and added sugars. So you wanna be selective um, at meal time and stack times. Slow, the concept of slow. So these foods are a little bit higher in fat, maybe total fat, added sugar, every now and then, a splurge. But remember, get back on track, the slow concept. And the woe, maybe take a second look, take a second look. Foods that are highest in total fat and added sugar are often in terms of um, nutrients or lower nutrients. These foods are only for special occasion. If you know you're not going to go back to that uh, family festivity for a couple of years, then indulge in grandma's favorite Louisiana crunch cake. It because you may not get back there for about five years, so enjoy a modest portion. So, watch what you're doing. Another question for you. So, and I believe do there's a chart. Do you recognize foods from this chart that you can choose on a daily basis and that you can categorize as slow or low? So, take a look in, at that and see what you think. So the question is, do you recognize foods from this chart that you choose on a daily basis that may be in the slow or the low category? Anything you see on the chart, 
So go is, is great. Green light, go. All right. More nutrient dense. What to include in a healthy eating pattern. Slow is, well, let me take a second look. Let me think twice about it. Let me wait for the weekend. And a woe is, nope. I need to take a second look. It does not fit into my eating pattern at the time. So how do you think you can make changes? Okay, I've got someone sharing. Thank you. Mike Wilson says olive oil. This is all. Yeah. That's, that's heart healthy oil. I'm on unsaturated fat. That works. So it, just in, in concluding this part, um, how do you think you can make changes that uh, your shopping cart continues to be in the go category? The go category. It's pretty decent, pretty decent. Next slide, Mike. Shopping in small retail stores. Thank you so much. So what is most important now? The number of small chain stores is growing specifically in neighborhoods that lack access to affordable food items. I, I will say what's printed here. Dollar General stores grew from 20,000 in 2011 to 30,000 in 2018. So sometimes it can be difficult to um, find food items in these stores. Recently, stores like Dollar General have made an effort uh, to better for you items on its shelves and they've begun to carry popular foods. Um, items that you're familiar with and that you see actually in the supermarket. But this is my personal comment. It's important for you to check the packaging of these particular food items. Again, I'm expressing my personal comment. Please check the expiration date of the products that you're picking up in these stores. Please observe how these products are being merchandised. If the refrigerator or freezers um, don't feel cold or um, at the right temperature when you open up a door, think twice. And who's the manufacturer? So um, it is what it is. This is what it is in our neighborhoods. But you as a consumer can check packaging thoroughly. As a consumer, you can check expiration dates. You can see how the pro products are all merchandised. And you can check to see who the manufacturer is. Um, just to stay here a bit, Mike, um, here are some uh, smart choices, um, if you will, um, for um, snacks. And um, sometimes they are affordable. They are affordable. But remember what I shared with you in terms of what the dietary guidelines for Americans, the new version, 2020, 2025, said in terms of the percentage of, of sugar and the milligrams of sodium per serving. So be cognizant and be aware of that. Okay. Next slide, Mike. Next slide. Homework. So you were given homework. And the homework says, so you've learned to make um, healthier choices while shopping, but what about those favorite dishes that are family favorites? Did anybody complete their homework? And if so, can, would you like to share? And we could talk about some recipe modifications, if you will. So can you take a family favorite recipe and make it healthy and or make it healthier? Zucchini muffins, Miss Johnson. Wow, nice. Nice. That's a really good muffin with excellent recipe. Um, it's not a bad at all. Not bad at all. I had a, a patient share with me once and for the nurses and doctors online, um, 
I asked, well, what, you know, kind of vegetables do you like? And he mentioned um, carrots were his favorite vegetable. Well, that's great. That's wonderful. So how do you prepare it? He said, in a cake. I eat carrot cake all the time. <laughs> Wrong answer. Macaroni and cheese comes to mind. Okay. Do you remember grandma's macaroni and cheese? Um, anybody else? So we have zucchini muffins on board. So take um, next slide, Mike. I think it's a slide a chart. So let's take a look at a chart, a substitution chart, if you will. And you can use these to make healthier choices. Have you thought about that? When you make your next meatloaf, how about mixing ground turkey? Now, to be honest, some people have mentioned when they make a meatloaf out of ground turkey, it tends to be very dry. So perhaps maybe 75% ground turkey, 25% ground beef, if you consume ground beef, but maybe 90% ground beef mixed with the ground turkey. But look at what they're suggesting here in terms of instead of use, instead of the regular cheese, use a low-fat cheese. I know when we make um, macaroni and cheese, only around the holidays, we do not make macaroni and cheese within our family, um, my family network, um, other than that. And we use um, skin milk and we use, um, you know, some low fat cheese, some regular cheese, because it's only holiday time that we do that. Uh, instead of margarine, oil, or butter, use a low fat spread. You see, so what do you think about this chart? And, and this is exactly what I mentioned. Instead of the evaporated milk, we use the evaporated skin milk. I make my own sauce for pasta with pureed vegetables. Wow. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. To trick the kids, it's nice. Good job. Good job. And when you're preparing uh, your vegetables or boiling the vegetables, um, you always incorporate that liquid back in into a soup or into um, your sauces. Excellent. Whole eggs. Instead of a whole egg, use two egg whites. Now, sometimes in a recipe, you need to use a whole egg. The takeaway message is two egg whites will give you the equivalent of one whole egg in a recipe. So I often talk with patients who are transitioning into a low cholesterol eating plan. They've been doing the cholesterol, high saturated fat um, eating for so long, it's hard for them to transition. So I often tell them maybe two egg whites and one yolk, just to give them a little bit more substance. On the very bottom, you see there use whole milk or heavy cream. Instead of the whole milk and heavy cream, use skim or one percent. Has anyone ever tried plain Greek yogurt? Plain Greek yogurt. You can use that for um, in heavy cream or in soups or sauces. You can also use that instead of sour cream. It can um, heard about using applesauce to substitute eggs when baking. Thank you for sharing. Never done that. Excellent. Thank you. Um, some people use the applesauce often um, as, as a sweetening agent, also in a, in a similar recipe. Um, uh, Greek yogurt, again, just to conclude that, you can replace one third to one half of butter in a baking recipe to cut down on the amount of calories and fat without losing softness or moisture in using plain Greek yogurt. Not bad. Not bad. So, Mike, the next slide. Thank you so much for sharing. The next slide. Eating healthy away from home. Uh, so now we've got a lot of tools, a lot of tools that are in your toolbox. Used to shop, to plan meals for you and your family. But there comes a time when we all have to dine out, right? And it's okay to do that. Be at a restaurant and order out and, and bring into the home. And that should be done occasionally, of course, for the economic um, sense of it as well. 
But health, healthy eating does not have to stop when you eat out. Typically, the meals they offer are higher in calories, saturated fat, sodium added sugar. Let me just ask you a quick question. Do you know why that is? Why sometimes when you're either dining out or ordering a takeout and bringing it home, why does it seem to be higher in sodium, added sugars and high in fat, et cetera? Why do you think? Just real quick. Yes, it tastes better, Ms. Johnson. Yes, anybody else? Yep. It's gonna taste better, one. Number two, they want you to come back. Number three, they don't want you to post a review. So they're gonna make sure they're gonna do the right thing the right time. So you as a consumer have to judge yourself um, accordingly. So uh, your body will crave it, yes, yes. Um, let's review, you're gonna review or you should have a handout eating foods away from home. So I'm sure you received that. So you have your information in front of you. And instead of drink, I'm gonna say, consider your beverage. Consider your beverage. Choose water first, an essential nutrient often forgotten about. Um, unsweetened teas. Um, pretty soon we'll be getting really good hot weather and you can make good old fashioned sun tea, right? Um, other beverages without added sugar to complement your meal. Choose a salad, that's next. Start your meal. Um, thank you for sharing, um, Ms. Jackson. The vegetables is always better. Yes, thank you. Choose a salad, yes, thank you. Start your meal with a salad first. Every first, if you're dining out, you may eat less, but anyway, have the salad first with vegetables to help you feel satisfied. And always, it is most important, you are in charge. You are the consumer. Ask for salad dressings, et cetera, on the side. You be in control. Thank you. Um, share a dish. Um, share a dish with a friend or a family member. You don't have to have the whole thing by yourself. Or ask the server to pack half the entree before it comes to the table um, to control the amount eaten. That's a challenge. But if not, do that before you conclude the meal. You have to customize your meal. So in thinking of that, you want to order a side dish or an appetizer. That's a smaller portion than the regular meal. Pack a snack. Pack fruits, sliced vegetables. Um, Mrs. Mrs. Jackson had mentioned the vegetables and the fruits. Pack those with you for a long road trip. So you won't hear are we there yet? Nice, healthy snack. They won't be stressing you out. Fill your plate with vegetables and fruit. So stir fry, make a kebab. Choose a meatless, a healthy meatless meal once a week. A vegetarian meals are usually meals filled with more vegetables. And remember, review and compare the nutrition data if available. Many menus now include nutrition information. Look for items that are lower in calories, saturated fat and sodium. That's important. And ask the server if you don't see them on the menu. Sometimes they will provide you with additional um, menu options. And pass the buffet. Here's a question for you. It's not in my talking points, but here's a question for you. So if you have the opportunity to go to a buffet, what is the first thing you need to do? So you're seated at the table with your family members and um, you wait for the server to come to you and give you direction. And they say, help yourself. What's the first thing you need to do if you are at a buffet? You know, the service has changed considerably. The service has changed considerably. You can check the answer. What do you think is the first thing you need to do when you go to a buffet and when that becomes um, our norm again? Anybody want to chat and answer real quick? Uh, maybe go straight to the fruits and veggies um, section. Okay, go straight. Thank you so much. Go straight to the fruit and vegetables. Yeah. Okay, that's nice. Yeah, okay. That's, close, well, that's what we've been talking about. Yeah, maybe. Survey 
Well, water, yeah, that's nice too. That's nice too. Okay, what's realistic? That may happen, that may not happen. Okay, because the fried fish section is calling your name. The pepperoni cheese section is calling your name. So I've been going through all of these classes sponsored by this great fraternity. And yeah, well, I'm at the buffet and yeah, that's going to wait. <laughs> what you can do is take a walk around the buffet table first. Walk around the buffet table. So you get a few steps in, all right? Then you go back and select. So, and then you then make your, your, your uh, correct and hopefully healthy choices. And go for exactly what you just talked about. Your steamed and grilled um, dishes, okay? Um, dishes which may have fewer calories and foods. And, and watch out for those that are fried in oil or cooked in butter. You'll be able to visualize that. Remember the whole grain, whole grain and enriched choices. The 100% whole wheat bread. And remember, I talked about anything listed on the nutrition label, the nutrition fact label, with the first five ingredients are, are predominant. And I threw out the word wheat. I didn't say 100% whole wheat, did I? Uh, so these are things you need to take into consideration. So um, see if the whole grain, 100% uh, whole wheat rolls are available, if they are available in pasta and sandwiches. And don't feel like you have to clean your plate. Well, that's what we were told sometimes, some of us. Not anymore. Take the leftovers home, but please, you're going to receive information on safe food storage for refrigerators and take homes. Be cognizant on long that needs to stay in your refrigerator. Leftovers in the refrigerator are safe to eat for about three, maximum four days. That's what's printed here. But you're going to receive the information on safe food storage, and I encourage you to um, govern yourself accordingly. Any questions for me? This was exciting, but we're not finished yet. Any questions for me? So while Mike is transitioning to something, uh, a request that some consumers, uh, some parents, sorry, have made about weight and energy matters, I'm going to share some additional information with you. But based on what uh, the uh, fraternity has put into place, the cues have put into place today for you, any questions for me? I must say this um, is um, an exciting opportunity. It's something that we need in our community. This is um, hopefully going to be a, a global kind of thing because it's um, a, a message that is most important. And I think it's spearheaded by this phenomenal fraternity. So this was the, um, a question I believe that was um, separate and apart from what our topic was today, but it was based on a comment, I believe it was last week, that some of you would needed information on calories. And 1,500 calorie, I believe, was the question. And 1,800 calorie meal plan. And I can do that. But I want to say to you before Mike advances it, and we'll go through this really quickly. Um, so how do you know you need 1,500 calories a day? How do you know you need 1,800? Should we try not to, oh, can, okay, here's a question. Before we move on, Mike, here's a question about the canned vegetables. Um, canned vegetables, it is what it is. Some of us can um, have the opportunity to um, shop and bring home fresh vegetables. And some of us have the opportunity to purchase frozen vegetables and have enough freezer space to do that. And if you bring home canned vegetables, they should first of all be no salt added first. Uh, so if you're purchasing a canned vegetable, I assuredly believe that it should be a no salt added canned vegetable. And then you can spice it up accordingly with herbs and spices without salt. So there's nothing wrong with canned vegetables. Um, keep in mind, you still got to check the expiration date. No matter where you're shopping, be it um, a large supermarket that we're all familiar with, or um, a Dollar General, or um, a similar type of store, please check the expiration date. 
make sure in terms of purchasing a canned vegetables, you don't see any bulging size or dented cans. Does the consumer have to inspect what you're bringing into your home? So canned vegetables are fine. Long story short, I season, um, if, if I buy canned vegetables on sale, um, I season it with herbs and spices without salt. I actually, in my home personally, I do not have salt in my home personally. I use herbs and spices without salt. So thank you, excellent question. Thank you for that. We're up against, oh, okay, Mike. Okay, um, so Mike, we're gonna fast forward through this um, because this is the information. Next slide, Mike. This has nothing to do with um, the topic on hand, but this was a question. And um, so you have the information in front of you. I believe, Mike, you're going to send this out, right? Yes, I'll send it out. Okay, next slide. This is what my question was for you. How do you know you need 1,500, 1,800 calories? Ah, two main factors that need to come into consideration. What is your physical activity like? Basic BMR. What are the minimal number of, of calories that you need for breathing, for sleeping, for basic life functions? Is your activity level sedentary, moderate, moderately active, and active? Next slide, Mike. Where the rubber hits the road, right here, based on gender and the activity level. How do you know you need 1,500, 1,800 calories per day? How do you know? So a lot goes into consideration. I can pull any number of calories out the hat and make it happen for you. Next slide, Mike. So this is um, an article that I accessed and prepared for you. And the citation is on the first PowerPoint um, slide. And next, Mike, this is a shortcut method on how to calculate the number of calories you need per pound. So if you're, um, 160 pound person and you want to maintain your waist weight um you and based on your height and weight so that's when you need a registered dietitian nutritionist to tell you what your target body weight should be but let's say you weigh 160 pounds and you want to maintain it you need roughly ah uh, uh wait a minute hold on wait, one, six, give me a second so you would need about 2,400 calories a day to maintain your weight at 160 if that's what you want to do. But a registered dietitian nutritionist will tell you exactly what your target body weight should be. So this is a shortcut method. This actually, this method is an extrapolation of a, another the formula to determine caloric needs. Next slide, Mike. This is how you do it without me. Or Lisa. <laughs> Next slide, Mike. Next slide. And next slide. That's what is key right here. That is a magic number. That's a magic number. There are 3,500 calories in one pound of body fat. And all it takes is 500 calories in excess, in excess of needs times seven days a week, not burned, yields a pound weight gain by the end of the week. So let's say that 160 pound person that wanted to maintain themselves at 160 pounds and I calculated they needed 2,400 calories, all they needed to do was add 500 calories, not burned and the body doesn't differentiate. It could be apples, apple pie. It could be zucchini muffins. It could be macaroni and cheese. The body doesn't care. It's 500 calories in excess of needs not burned. Now it's 2,900 calories. That's a pound weight gain by the end of the week. 500 calories times seven days a week, 3,500 calories, pound of weight gain by the end of the week. Next slide, Mike. That's it. Next slide, Mike. Thank you. That's the general advice. And I believe that concludes that. Next slide, Mike. I think that's it. Thank you. Any questions? I'm sorry. That was quick, but it didn't. I think it may have addressed the answers. And if we need to um, go back here in terms of calories, we can at another 
time when the fraternity deems it necessary. Thank you so much. Any questions for me? This has been an exciting day for me. Thank you so much and I hope for you as well. Thank you so much. I appreciate it so Thank much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Denise. This has been an excellent presentation. Uh, meal planning and shopping on uh, a budget is very thank important. You. And thank you for bringing this up. I think parents, uh, you know, a lot of helpful information on food waste, on nutritional labels and, and uh, eating leftovers and, and meal planning. All of this is helpful information. And I know the parents, like myself, enjoyed this information. Um, thank you. So thank you so much. Uh, we're gonna give you a great big round of applause. <laughs> Have a healthy day, uh, everyone. <laughs> this, this definitely goes a, a, a long way. And uh, I know the parents uh, were given a um, homework assignment. So I know that some of them haven't done it. They're gonna do it now as a result of your encouragement. Okay, excellent. <laughs> uh, are there any questions before we um, sign off from, from anyone? I do have a question. Do you have that recipe for that Louisiana crunch cake you talked about? Yeah, from ShopRite. No. <laughs> that sounds really good. Oh, that's funny. I love it. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> you. I, we need the recipe for the zucchini muffins, one of your parents. If she could share that, that would be great. Maybe she could put it in the chat. Uh, the yes, please. Put that in the chat before we, we uh, sign off. And uh, as Mike indicated, he's gonna share all this great, great uh, information in the slide presentation that you put together. He will share it with the parents because- Thank you. Information is, is, the, is the key to healthy, healthy eating and to a healthy lifestyle. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the awesome. opportunity. Thank you. This was awesome. Uh, Yolanda, you have anything before we uh, sign off? No? Okay, sound like- <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brother Hayes, you wanted to add anything before we sign off? I want to thank Mike so much for his help, his expertise. I really Great. appreciate you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. I Mike, think I'm Sam, I'm looking forward to next week's workout and uh, it's a great presentation. Great job. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, does anyone uh, want to say anything before we sign off? Incentives time. Yes. So Mike uh, will be sending out incentives to all the parents for participating today. Um, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to participate. Again, we encourage you to encourage family and friends and children in grades three to six to participate in our upcoming. We have two more sessions. We want as many people as possible to take advantage, particularly as it takes uh, to the physical aspect that we're going to have on the next session. Brother Hayes will uh, lead us uh, a few minutes with uh, exercising and we want to uh, take advantage of his expertise in that field. So thank you so much. Mike, you want to let the parents know when we're going to send out the uh, incentives? Yeah, those will go out uh, mid next week. Okay. And uh, from the last session, you should have received your incentives. If not, they're definitely coming because those were mailed um, last week, I believe, uh, by Mike. So all the parents will again get another incentive uh, as a result of your participation. Your feedback was certainly encouraging and we appreciate each and every time you get on and provide feedback. So thank you so much. Uh, without further ado, if there are no questions, we can certainly um, uh, sign off for, for today. And the next session is when, Yolanda? May 15th. May 15th. Again, tell a family and friend to join because we want everyone to take advantage of this wealth of uh, information and that has been shared and continues to be shared. And they can go back uh, on the, um, the website to get the past uh, presentations because that information was equally as uh, lively and helpful. So thank you very much. Enjoy your weekend and we will see you on May the 15th. Great job, Brother Greer. Great, 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 great job, Denise. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, sister. And for all the parents, remember, you'll receive the um, presentations as well, so you can go over those charts, which are really excellent if you get an opportunity to study them. And she sent some copies of different meal plans for you as requested previously. Um, and the 15th is for both, right? The parents and the... I appreciate it for this one. Oh, okay. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Hold on. Let, let, me, let me mute out. Somebody, sorry. Somebody's... Uh, sorry. Uh, um, so, yeah, that was... Uh, all right, could you repeat your question, please? 
I just wanted to confirm that the May 15th is for the parents and guardians plus the children, right? Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And, and wear, wear some loose clothing because Tony's going to work you guys out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Enjoy. Okay. Thank, thank you so you. much. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. All right. Thank you. Thank you.